Now let's talk about some sorting algorithms. So first of all, bubble sort, a classic of this genre. So sorting algorithms put an unordered list in order, so ascending, descending, alphabetical, etc. And bubble sort works in passes, so it'll go a pass is going from a first element to the last element. And what the, the, the name comes from, the largest value, if it's ascending, bubbles towards the end. And it does this using comparisons between pairs and then swapping if they're out of order. So that won't make sense necessarily right now. I'll show you an example in a second. So the way this works is you start at the beginning of the list and make a pass along it, comparing adjacent values. If they're in order, you leave them. If they're not in order, you swap them. So this is the pair comparison and swapping if they're out of order. And then you repeat this um, until you complete a pass without any swap. So this is just for one pass and you repeat this until you don't have to swap anything. But I'll, say, I'll show you this in a second. Okay, so we've got a list and we want to put it in ascending order using bubble sorts. So let's follow this sort of instruction then. So we start at the beginning of the list and make a pass along it. So I'm going to show you one pass and then I will skip the other pass because this is very tedious to do as most algorithms are if you actually follow it by hand. So first of all we want to compare 9 and 5. Are they in order? Well they're not because we need to swap them because it needs to be in ascending order. So we basically will just write down 9 and 5 and I'm not going to write out the rest of the list each time because that game is a bit of a waste of time. So what you can next do, you now, you now 9 is now in the second position so you now compare 9 with 6. 6 is also less than 9 so you swap them you now then compare 9 and 7, 7 is less than 9 so you swap them, uh, 9 and 8, 8 is less than 9 so we sort of, you can see I've deliberately done something here so you can see 9 essentially bubbling towards the end as I say earlier so 9 again is greater than 2 so 2, 9 this is roughly in line, 4 is less than 9 and then 9 is uh, greater than 7 so 9 bubbles towards the end and again you could write out the rest of um, the list each time but you don't really need to to see what's happening so 9 bubbles towards the end and now you can leave 9 in the next pass this is only one pass this is our first pass at this problem and 9 is now sort of sorted so 9 is the largest in the list and it's bubbled towards the end Okay, to spare you my handwriting, here's our result from the first pass. So 9 is sort of sorted already, it's almost like it's a partition within the list. So after the second pass, 8 bubbles towards the end, it's the second largest, so now these are kind of separate. After the third pass, 7 bubbles towards the end, we've got two 7s, which doesn't make too much difference actually in sort of a general sense. After pass 4, the other 7, I think it's added in this order. After pass 5, 6, and then it's actually all at this stage, but we have to do a final pass. You've got to remember this is done by a computer. We can notice that this is an order, but a computer has to be sure. And the way it can be sure is it goes through the pass without actually swapping anything. This is how it knows when to terminate because it's sorted. So this is our final result. Let's now look at a slightly more complicated algorithm, I'm afraid, but a much more useful one. It's much more efficient than bubble sort. Merge sort is a divide and conquer algorithm is a few is a class of algorithm divide and conquer and in the divide step the input list is split into two lists of similar size and in the conquer step both sub lists are sorted recursively and recursively means to call the algorithm from within the algorithm so it's repeating the algorithm for each sub list which may not make a lot of sense so you can kind of understand merge sort without knowing how it works recursively but it's useful to know because recursive behavior is very common in computer science as you move forward. But ignore it for now, to combine it you then have to merge your sorted sublist into one sorted list. So to kind of go through the algorithm in simpler terms without talking about recursion, first of all you're dividing the list until each sublist contains one element, so a one element sublist is taken to be sorted because it is effectively sorted. It then has to repeatedly merge these sublists, these sorted sublists to produce new sorted sublists until you only have one sublist which is your not, well, it's not actually a sublist, it's your output. And this is a GIF which is, comes from Wikipedia. Wikipedia is quite good for algorithms actually. It's showing you the merging step now. But we'll show you it, I'll show it myself. So we're going to have our input list here and we're going to end up with our output here. So the first step is to divide this until we get to a step where each sublist is of length 1, so it's sorted. So we're dividing this into two equal size sublists, not actually doing anything to all of them at this stage. And this is where the recursion comes in at this step. So effectively now, the algorithm is calling itself on each sublist. So 
it takes two four and one to be the input sublist, so it divides this again into two separate lists. Again, you don't really have to understand recursion to just know that it keeps splitting it until it gets to size one, until each sublist is of size one. But these are two distinct recursion calls. So we've we've now done the the divide step because each are of size one. We then have to actually conquer them and then merge the results. So to conquer, we need to sort it in this case. So two and four are kind of sorted and merged together. Uh, one and five are again in order, so that's fine. But nine and three have to be swapped. And then we have to combine the steps from each of these. So two and four and one and five. What it will do, it will look at the two smallest elements and can and compare them. So one is less than two, so one goes at the front. Five is greater than four, so five goes towards the end. And three and nine, it's on its own because we have an even number it's, or an odd number. It's slightly awkward. But then we can combine these finally by going well three is greater than one and greater than two so three slots in the third position and nine is greater than five so nine goes towards the end so we're dividing it at the first stage and then we're merging them to ensure they're sorted but it actually works with recursion because it repeats the algorithm for each sublist effectively but you don't need to necessarily understand that to know that this is our output we get from using merge sort a third and final algorithm we're going to look at for sorting is insertion sort this is simpler than probably both bubble sort and merge sort, thankfully. So all this does, it divides a list into a sorted part and an unsorted part. Or you can think of it in terms of two separate lists, but I tend, I mean, in implementation, it's certainly done on the same list with just partitions. So initially, your sorted part of the list is empty, and then you continually, as you loop through, add an element to that list, ensuring that the sorted part is kept ordered, which will make sense right now. So this is the same list we did, I think, bubble sort with. and we have our sorted bit which we're going to do in pink so initially in the very first step this is empty or you can take this to be the first step it doesn't actually matter but effectively the, limp, the, the sorted list has just got nine in it now so it is sorted the orange bit is the unsorted part of the list so we now add five to this and we need to keep it in order so five gets put before nine they get compared five is at the first position we then add six to the sorted part. Six is greater than five, but less than nine, so six goes in the middle. And hopefully you can see now, or some of you might be able to see now, why this isn't a very efficient algorithm, because you have kind of nested loops. You've got a loop within a loop, which is very bad for efficiency. Bubble sort is not as obvious that it does this, but bubble sort is the same when you actually implement it. You've got a loop within a loop, because you're looping across the uh, list in general, but then you're looping within the sorted part of it to put your element in order. So not ideal, this is not very efficient, it's a lot less efficient than merge sort as we'll talk about in a minute. So now we need to add 7 to our sorted partition, 7 is greater than 5, is greater than 6, is less than 9, so 7 goes in that position and we can kind of skip the rest of this now, it's hopefully obvious how this works. So it just makes its way through and then loops with, loops to compare your element in the sorted part so you can add it, which is why it's not hugely efficient. So if we look at them compared, uh, all three algorithms we looked at, bubble sort and insertion sort have the same it's called time complexity so in the worst case they have the same time this is just as I say an, an, a mathematical way to analyze it the graph looks a bit strange this is a graph of n squared and this is a graph of n log n for merge sorts so it's maybe not as clear as with the searching algorithm which one's more efficient but in the same input size so an input size of n you can see that it takes longer for bubble sort and insertion sort than it does for merge sort in the worst case scenario these graphs are slightly strange. Um, the whole idea of analysing it in this way is to just see how the algorithms work as it scales as the input size grows.